Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to Stuff in Excel. I'm Richard. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and also hit that notification bell so that when we issue new videos, you'll be sure to get a notification that video is available for you. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at a way to take workbooks of data, put it into a folder, then use Power Query to combine those workbooks into a single file, and then we're going to set that up so that when we add new workbooks of data to that folder, it will automatically update that data file for us so that we don't have to go in and reclean the data or recombine the data. It'll automatically do it for us. It's really a neat tool within Excel and I think you're really going to like it. Let's just get right into it. So let me set the stage just a little bit. We've got some files that we've been receiving annually from one of our divisions, our donut division. Uh, they send their sales information in and my job is to clean the data file up and to combine all the data files with the previous data files. As it turns out, every year I end up doing the same thing over and over again with this data. I need to clean it up and set it up right and I need to set it up also so that when I get new data it will automatically update. So where's what I'm going to do? I'm going to go up here and I'm going to actually, I've got my, my 2021 2022 and 2023 data in a file. And let me go grab that folder. Uh, so I'm going to go over here, I'm going to go data, I'm going to go to get data, and I'm going to go to from folder. And you can see that right here. I'm going to get it from folder. I'm going to click on that. It's going to want to know what folder I want to get it from. So it, it looks for it. Now it's going to say, okay, where do I want to get this? Well, I happen to have this up on my desktop. And this folder I happen to know is in this Power Query Transform Data folder. And there's that folder. I'm just going to click on it. And I'm going to open that folder. Now what it's going to do is it's going to ask, it's going to show me what files are in the folder. And it shows me right there, 2021 donut sales, 2022 donut sales, 2023 donut sales. And what I'm going to do is go down here to the bottom. You know, we've seen before load and transform data, but now we have a new button called Combine. When I click on that, I can combine and transform the data. I'm going to combine all this data into one, and then I'm going to transform all of it at the same time. So it's going to open up for me. You can see it's evaluating the query. It's going to open up my Power Query Editor. And it's going to ask me here what I want to get the order info. And I'm going to hit OK. So it's evaluating my query, and it's now going to load for me. And here it is. We're in the Power Query Editor. You can see that up here at the top. Power Query Editor. And there's all of my data. Now I've got to do some things to it. I've got source name. I probably don't need that. Uh, order ID. I don't know. I may keep it. Customer name. That's a customer number and a customer name together. I'll probably want to separate those. I've got number of donuts sold. I've got revenue and cost, but I don't have gross margin. I've got order date and ship date, and I might want to know how many days it's been it takes for each order to ship because I have might have a standard, uh, and I want to see if we've hit the standard. And I've got order status. So let's go in and start editing this data. And, um, so what we're going to do is, first thing, let's go in and add a couple of columns. Uh, let's go ahead and add our gross margin column. So we're going to go back to home, and up here at the top, we're going to go to add column. We're going to do custom column, and we'll open the custom column box. So I'm going to call this new item gross margin. Now I got my equals is already here. I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to double click on revenue. Now I'll say minus cost, and I'll hit OK. It's going to create it. Now remember, whenever I insert a column, it always inserts it to the far right. I can now click that and drag it to where I want it. I want it right here after cost, so I'll just put it right there, and there's my cost and gross margin data. Next thing I want to know is number of days it took to ship this thing. Well, I, remember what we know about dates, right? These are, they look like dates to us, but they're stored in Excel as a serial number, and uh, so we're going to now go in and get that number. Um, and all we have to do is just subtract one date from the other, and it'll give us the difference between number of days between those two. So I'm going to insert another column. I'll do custom. I'll go up to add column. We'll do custom column. And I'm going to put days to ship. 
get rid of the custom word, is now equals. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to say my ship date minus my order date. Now that's going to give me an interesting number. First of all, it's over here to the far right. We're going to drag it over here. But you'll notice it's, it's kind of weird looking, right? What I really want is I want that to be in a number format. It's really easy to do that. We're going to click right up here where it tells us the form or the type of data it is. See, this is a calendar number. That's a calendar number. Those are numbers. We're going to change that right there for, to a whole number. And all we have to do is click on that. It's going to change the format of those numbers, and there we go. And I can actually uh, eventually resize that if I want to. It doesn't matter. There's one other thing I want to add. I want to add a column for custom day or for the year. I don't have a, a column for the year, so I'm going to go in and add another custom column. And this was going to be interesting. So I, I have to think a little bit. It doesn't really allow me to a function to extract the year, but I can first I'm going to create a new column, and that new column is going to simply be the order date. Because for each of these, the order date are in the, the particular year we're interested in. So I'll click on order date and I'll hit OK. Oh, I see it didn't do it. I got to double click it. There we go. Now I can do it. And it creates a column over here with my date in it. But I don't want the date, I want the year. So how do I get that? Well, on what I'm going to do is go up here. If I if I click, I know my column is highlighted up here under the add column tab, and why it's under this tab, I don't know, but there's an item here for date, and when I click on date, it gives me some things I can do. I'm going to choose the year, and I want the year. Now watch what happens over to the far right when I click year. It changes it all to the year of the transaction, and I'm going to put this back at the very beginning of all of my data. So I'm going to have to just sort of click and drag it. And it's right here at the beginning. Now, I don't want this source name, so I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go to Home, and I'm going to Remove Column. Now, I could also remove the order date if I wanted to. I could, or I could remove that ship status, but I'll just leave that where it is. But there's one more thing I have to do. I have to separate this customer number and customer name. So I'm going to do that by clicking on that. Now, I'm going to go up to Split Column. And I'm going to split column by the delimiter. And the delimiter I'm going to use is the hyphen. There's a hyphen in here. So I'm going to click on split column. And it's going to ask me um, what my delimiter is going to be. So let's go back here. And there we go, by delimiter. And it's already got in there the hyphen because I've been doing it before. So it anticipates that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to use, because I choose custom. I chose custom. So I'm going to hit OK. It's going to split those into two columns. Now, the only problem with this is that I've got an extra space right here before each one of these names. So I'm going to go back up here to the name column, and I'm going to uh, now go to transform. I'm going to go to format, and we will trim all those extra spaces out. And what you'll see is all of those names will move one space to the left. And there they go. Now, the last thing I want to do is change my column names. So I want to change this to customer number. Remember, we just double click on it, call that customer number. And I'm going to change, click on this, and I'm just going to call it customer name. So I've got that, and now all I have to do is close and load my data. So I'll go back to, to home. And I'll close and load the data. It's going to load it to my Excel file. It takes just a moment. Now, you notice I've still got the queries over here. If I wanted to go back in and transform something else, all I'd have to do is double click on this up, auto update folder, and it would autom I could go back in and do some more editing on this if I wished. But now I've got this. Let's go ahead and just create a pivot table and pivot chart. So I'm going to get out of the magnifier, and I'll go up to Insert. And I'm going to go over to Pivot Chart and Pivot Table. And I'm going to just say yes, and I'm going to put it on a new worksheet. It's going to open that up, and I'm going to put year. Year is going to be over in the axis, uh, this, this, over the axis. And I'm going to put gross margin. I'm going to make this a really simple chart. And what I've done is I've shown gross margin for, Janu for 2021, 2022, and 2023. Now, I just got an email. And when I go look at that email, I'll find it here. Here it is. This is my email 
from my, my YouTube email, and it says that I've got a file that's just come in. The 2024 donut sales has just come in. Let's open the email. There it is. So I'm now going to download this file, and I can click on it, and it opens it up so I can look at it. And there's my file. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to save that file, and I'm going to save it. Save it as my 2024 donut sales, but I'm going to save it in that same folder that we've already looked at, which is going to be up here on my desktop. And there's my Power Query Transformation folder. I'm going to put it in the Auto Update folder. I'm going to save it. And now I want you to see what happens. When I go into this now, and click in here and I update, I do my pivot chart and I do my refresh. Now sometimes it does it on the first time I hit refresh, sometimes I have to hit refresh twice. So it didn't do it that time, let's go back in and do it again, it should do it this time. And there you go, it automatically updated my file and I now have um, my data all right there. And if I go in and look at this updated folder, I not only have 2021 and 22 and 23, but way down at the bottom my 2024 data has now been added. So that's a way that you can create an auto-updating folder so that every time you get new data, not only does it bring the new data in, but what's really cool is it took that new data and it actually went ahead and did things like year to it. It separated the customer number and customer name. It added a gross margin and it added a days to ship to that 2024 data, and I didn't have to do it because the query is already there, and the query already acted on that new data as it came in. So it's a really cool trick. I really hope you have a chance to use it. 